This is a Formula One racing suit. And this is the same racing suit that I used to race in Euro NASCAR. And if you thought that it's used to protect the drivers only from fire, you're wrong. Because in this there are some new technologies that are revolutionizing the motorsports. And if you thought that this is the only mandatory equipment, apart from the helmets and the hands collar, you're wrong. Because you also have the undersuit, the pants, which together in Italy were called Super Pippo, which was super goofy. Uh, I don't know if you remember the character from the comics. But the thing is that when you wear them, you look like super goofy. <laughs> we have the under helmets, the fireproof socks, gloves, and the shoes. These things are not mandatory on the motorcycles, but on the cars are mandatory. And in a few minutes you'll understand why. About the helmet and the collar, I will tell you in another video, because today I will talk to you about the suit and the undersuit. All the things you see on this table are 100% made in Italy and exported worldwide. The company producing them is Freem, which is 100% Italian, and as an Italian I'm proud of it. So I will show you how the racing suit is manufactured. I am in Italy, precisely in Volpago del Montello, to the Freem headquarters. And this is the first product ever made by Freem, which is a rib protector for cards. It was 2003 and in the beginning the company was called Free Minds, but then the name was too long, so they decided to shorten it to Freem. Something like Facebook, which at the beginning it was called The Facebook. Now, talking about the racing suits, where everything starts? Here, sales department, where the company received the request from the customer, which working together with the design department, they transformed the desire of the customer into something real. And as you can see from this map, they work in the whole world. And actually this map is not complete yet because there are some new offices that need to be added. And the cool thing is that if you look closely, you can see that this map is hand drawn because everything you can see here is made by hands. Okay, the marketing department has received the request, but before transforming it into reality, you need one more thing, the measurements. Yeah, because we're talking about custom works. So you have two options, either the driver takes them by himself or he can be helped by someone from Freem. Once the sales department has everything they need, they pass the design and the measurements to the technical department. This is the modeling department. Here, the desire of the customer is converted into something real. Yeah, because starting from the design, you create all the parts. And I know it may sound crazy, but this is my suit. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, that's because every racing suit is made by parts which are cut and then sewed together. And each part of each racing suit is different because each driver has different sizes. Once they listed all the parts, they take all the fabrics, they take the file with the parts, they print a paper pattern to help cutting the fabric the right way, and they send everything to the cutting workshop and the cutting workshop is just an external workshop where they cut all the fabrics. And the cool thing is that it's not just made in Italy. It's also, we say, zero kilometers, which is something we used to say that everything is made in this area. Each workshop is just a few kilometers away from Freem. Once the parts are cut, they come back here to the quality control department. And here you understand the importance of the IT departments. Because imagine to create 5,000 racing suits per year, where every racing suit is totally different from the other ones. Different measures, different sponsors, different colors. The only way not to lose any information is to make everything digital. That's why every girl working here in her bench has a terminal like that with all the information about the project she's working on. So here, they check that every part has been cut properly. And in the meantime, on those parts, they complete the graphic design. Because as you can see, they're putting all the graphics and logos on those parts. So once they've been checked and the graphics has been designed, all the parts go to another workshop, which takes care to put all the logos and the graphics onto the parts. Then the parts come back again here to the quality control in order to check that every logo and every graphic is correct. And this is a very important thing because being everything handmade, it may happen that something is not perfect. Why? Because for example, let's take a piece of fabric which has been painted of blue in February. And then we take another piece of the same fabric which is painted with the same blue one month later. Those two blues may differ a bit because of the temperature, humidity and all those kinds of stuff. So that's why the quality control becomes that important. Because a custom-made racing suit must be controlled in every single detail. 
Once the parts are ready, they are sent to another workshop, which takes care of putting them all together. And then once the suit is finally complete, it comes back once again here for the final quality control. And as you can see, it's a super long process. And after this final quality check, the racing suit is ready to be delivered to the customer. And the final customer receives this wonderful racing suit. And it's so cool. I mean, those of you who ever raced know the feeling of wearing this. Because when you wear this, you know that you're going to race and it feels wonderful. So this one you see here is a Formula One racing suit. It has the same homologation, same quality. And those who are not familiar with motorsports may think that this is just a simple piece of clothing with sponsored on it. Like for example, football players, shirt and pants. Wrong. This has a very important function, so important that without it, you cannot race. Now, to understand the purpose of this suit, I will make a comparison between car suit and the motorbike racing suit. Now, a motorbike suit must protect you against impacts and abrasions. So it has some rigid protections on the elbow, on the shoulder, on the knee, on the leg. The most advanced one also have airbags and it's made of leather. All these things makes it super protective and even if it's the lightest model made of kangaroo leather, it's super heavy. On the other hand, the car suit must not protect you from impacts because it's the car itself which is designed to protect the driver from the impacts. In Formula 1 we have the safety chassis combined with the halo, while in GT or prototype cars we have the roll bar, which combined with the seat belts have the purpose to protect the driver from impacts. So what does this suit protect the driver from? If you remember Grosjean incident, you have the answer, fire. As you know, cars bring a lot of fuel inside. The biggest ones can bring more than 100 liters. And in case of crash, they can catch on fire. And the problem is that the driver strapped to the car with five point seat belts cannot escape easily. So in order to be able to escape, he must be protected as long as possible from fire. And this is precisely what this racing suit is designed for, to be fireproof. I mean, it's not that this fabric is 100% fireproof, because if you take it and put it for one hour into the fire, it will become ash. The thing is that it's designed to protect the driver from extreme heat for enough time to let him escape. On the other hand, on a motorcycle, you don't have the fire danger. I mean, more bikes can catch on fire. But the thing is that when the rider crashes, 99.999% of the time, already while crashing, he detaches from the bike. And in case he remains attached to the bike and the bike catches on fire, he just throws the bike and walk away. And moreover, the bike has only a few liters of fuel compared to the 100 inside of Formula 1 cars. The other big difference is that the motorbike suit with all the protections becomes very rigid. So it has to be designed perfectly to make the rider able to move because the riders move much more than the drivers and the measures must be super precise because if it's too big, the protections might move and not protect anymore. While the car suit is the least rigid thing in the world, so even if it's a bit bigger, nothing changes. Another difference, motorcycle suit is perforated to let the air through in order to cool down the driver, while the car suit must not be perforated because it has to keep the heat away from the driver. And the thing is that you may say, how come the drivers don't boil inside this suit? And that's something that I always wonder myself. So one day I went to those uh, firefighters that you see at the races close to the racetracks, which are completely dressed up totally covered and I went to him and asked him how come you don't boil in summer with 40 degrees outside and he looked at me and asked me how come you don't boil inside it you're an NASCAR with 40 degrees and I said wow <laughs> that's right and I thought that in summer completely dressed up it's not that hot and then I thought about guys in the desert riding camels all dressed up and I wonder why do they dress up instead of being naked the thing is that those people in the desert are wearing wool and the wool is an excellent insulator. So if it's 50 Celsius outside, the wool keeps your body at 37, which is cooler than 50. Here is the same. If in the car it's 40, this keeps you at 37, which is cooler than the car. And if you're into a fire, if outside it's 800 degrees, it keeps you at 37, which is <laughs> way better than 800. Same differences apply for shoes. The motorbike shoes have to protect you from distortion. 
impacts and the new driving style where you put the leg out. That's why they are super rigid and the sole is super thick because it has to last for all the time that you put the leg out and touch the ground. And especially when you push on the pegs, they must be super resistant. While the car shoes must not protect you from the crashes and the sole is super thin because this is what you need to be super sensitive on the throttle and on the brake. And the same goes for the balaclava, which in the more bikes it's not used, while in the car it's mandatory. Okay, so we saw that the car motorcycle suits are super different, but what about cars and carts? I don't have a cart suit, but I have a car and cart fabric. Now, from here you don't see a big difference, but if you see the suit, usually the car suit is more cottonish and opaque, while the cart suit is more plasticky and lucid. It, it doesn't mean anything like this. The big difference is that car suits cannot be used on carts, they don't have the right homologation, and cart suits cannot be used on cars because they don't have the right homologation. That's because the cart suit is meant to protect you from abrasions. That's because if you crash, you're not attached to the cart, so you might fall and hit the ground, or a cart might hit you and hit your body. So that's why it must protect you from abrasions, but it's not fireproof. That's because, exactly like the motorbikes, in the cart, fire is not a danger, because you have just a few liters of fuel, and if you crash, you can walk away. While in the cars, you don't have the risk of abrasions, but you have a big fire risk. To show you the difference of these fabrics on fire, I did a little homemade experiment. I went to the kitchen, I took some cotton fabric, which simulates a normal piece of clothing. I've put a piece of paper on it, which simulates our skin. I've also got a fire extinguisher, you know, for safety. And I turned on the fire. As you can see, after a few seconds, the cotton, which is not fireproof, sets on fire. And the fire passes through and sets the paper on fire, causing to the driver very bad burns. If we try with the card fabric, which as I told you is not fireproof, we can see that after a few seconds the fabric sets on fire, the fire passes through and once again sets the paper on fire. That's because the card suit protects from abrasions and not from fire. But if we try with the fireproof fabric, we can see that it's not 100% fireproof because it starts to burn a little bit, but it blocks the heat from passing through protecting our driver from the extreme heat of a fire. And our piece of paper is 100% intact. Obviously, it's a homemade experiment, but if we look at the fabrics, we can see how the car fabric literally took on fire and melted down, while the car fabric did burn a little bit, but resisted very well to the fire, protecting the driver from the heat. Another difference that the car suit has are these handles on the shoulders. Can you see them? This is because in case of crash where the driver cannot walk away from the car, the doctors can use these to pull him away of the car safely in case of fire or emergency. And I don't know if you ever noticed, this is especially in the Formula cars or in the GT cars. Many GT cars have a hole on the roll bar on the top, which is used to extract the driver in case of bad crash. Now, back to our clothing. Everything you see here on this table is mandatory. If you don't wear even one of these, you can be penalized or fined. Not only, it also must have a valid homologation. And every piece of clothing has written on it the homologation, which is sticked outside in order to be easy to, to read from the marshals. So you always have to wear the shirt, the jersey, the pants, the socks, the suit, the shoes, the balaclava, the gloves and the helmet, and the neck protector. And the thing that you probably don't know is that the fire protection does not happen because of the suit alone, but it happens because of the suit combined with the undersuit, both from fire and heat. Every component has been studied for years with drivers, and I wanna show you one cool thing about the gloves is that do you see the thumb stitching? So it should be here, but it's shifted here. This is because when you're grabbing the steering wheel, the stitching does not hurt your finger. And in many Howard races, it feels much more comfortable. You know, it takes years of experience to design. Even these smallest details. Now, you may think that this video ends here, but you're wrong, because now comes the technology of the racing suit. The first thing I wanna show you is the technology called F7. 
This is an exclusive from Free Motorsport and it has been developed together with the staff of researchers. This technology uses the FIR, which are the far infrared rays. According to some studies, properly using the FIR optimizes effort management and the workload in performance, it improves balance, it reduces inflammation and pain, it improves peripheral circulation, it promotes tissues oxygenation, it helps with the recovery, and it optimizes lactate disposal. So all these little dark things that you see inside the shirt and inside the neck are F7 inserts and they are used to improve the performance of the driver. I can't tell you precisely how the technology works because those informations are company secrets. I don't even know them, so I just told you what they made public. But it's cool to see that now the undersuits are studied to improve the driver performance. Finally, we have this little device here, which may seem like a fancy button, but instead it has an NFC technology. It's called iSkey, where I stands for in case of emergency. And it's a special device where the driver can upload special information and even PDF documents, which in case of crash where the driver is unconscious, you can grab a smartphone, use the NFC, and know everything you need to know about the driver. And Frame have been the first one in the world to introduce this in a racing suit. Frame is a really wonderful company, 100% Italian, I'm really proud of it. And when I've been there, I've seen many young people driven by passion, innovation, and especially more than 90% of the workers there are women. I left below in the description all the information about the company and the products. Thanks Frame for the suit and the informations, and see you in the next videos. Bye guys.